Little Woman fans, last week Melody and I started to dissect the chapter 35, Laurie's proposal to Joe. Now we are in halfway. I must say that every time when I have a guest in this podcast, it really gives me a new perspective to this book and the story and also the films. Melody and I will also be discussing about Laurie's proposal scenes in the movies. I think one of the major problems in most adaptations is that Laurie is incredibly idealized and his proposal to Joe is romanticized and that is one of the reasons why millions of people ship Joe and Laurie and want them to be together. Do you know how many Little Woman films there are that include Laurie's proposal to Amy for the past hundred years? The answer is none. It has never been adapted. When Laurie proposes Joe in the novel, he is very abusive. It's emotional manipulation. But when he proposes to Amy, he has grown a lot. He is not abusive. He wants to be Amy's equal. But you never see the difference in the adaptations. We are going to discuss about the 1994 film as well. There are lots of people who see Laurie's proposal very romantic in this movie. And then there are others who think it's kind of creepy. I did find this essay, why Joe seems surprised and even scared when Laurie kisses her in the 1994 film. And this is written by Kitoki. I thought this was very well written, so a shout out to them. This is their answer to a hardcore Joe and Laurie shipper. Maybe I can explain why Joe looks scared and confused during Laurie's proposal scene. Laurie was proposing, along with his love, a life that she could not envision for herself. His proposal fueled those fears already in Joe, that she was not a typical girl and would never fit in and behave as expected of her. Her utter instinct is to very much run away from Laurie and the life he offered her, to be a housewife and he fueled that insecurity she had and the doubt she had about herself. She could not resolve the turmoil within herself. Her true nature versus one society expects of her. That's where the first quote added to the gift set comes in. Even if Joe wanted to marry and be the wife he wanted her to be, she knew she would never be happy. She may have known Laurie forever, yet Laurie did not understand and know Joe based solely on his expectations of of their would-be marriage. Traipsing around high society, being the proper wife, to the proper businessman that Laurie feels he must succumb to be to fulfill his family's legacy. He offered insignificant things, luxury and fun, never needing to work. Juxtaposed to the end of the film, where Bear proposes, bumbling and awkward as it may have been, her eyes are warm and excited at the little time she spends with him, which was seven months in fact, with an additional three years of correspondences in the novel, he encourages her passion of writing, her intellectual acuity, her tenacity and boldness and never once proposed that marriage would mean a life of a typical housewife. He elevates her, in fact, I have nothing to give you, my hands are empty. She grabs hold of his hands and says, not empty now. She didn't need or want luxury or security, only love and support, and the freedom to do and be anything she pleased, both in work and in personality and character. He represented a partner which she could bumble through society with, not meeting those annoying expectations of conduct and behavior. He was just as much a foreigner to such things as she was. The second quote to get Gifts implies that those feelings of insecurity, those traits that made her awkward and incompatible with typical expectations of society, were traits to be celebrated and be awe of, which is what Bear is, completely in awe of her, nothing less than she deserves. Fluffy Cakes Estate has left a comment here. How willfully dense do you have to be? To not get why a woman would look scared and confused when one man is proposing to her, but enchanted and adoring when a different man does. Question of the day. I love the 1994 film, but it has one major flaw. That is, when Laurie proposes Joe, he says that he's going to work to his grandfather and they can live in London or whatever. That doesn't happen in the novel. In the novel, Laurie says that... They can just be lazy and live with his money. 
That's a huge difference. This is Small and Brown in the Rain, Little Woman podcast. I'll hurt myself if you say no. Another red flags in Laurie's proposal with Melody Ellison. Seeing a ray of hope in that last speech, Lori threw himself down on the grass at her feet, leaned his arm on the lower step of the stile, and looked up at her with an expectant face. Now that arrangement was not conductive to calm speech or clear thought on Joe's part, for how could she say hard things to her boy while he watched her with eyes full of love and longing and lashes still wet with the bitter drop or two her hardness of heart had wrung from him? She gently turned his head away, saying, as she stroked the wavy hair which had been allowed to grow for her sake. How touching that was, to be sure. I agree with mother that you and I are not suited to each other because our quick tempers and strong wills would probably make us very miserable if we were so foolish as to, Joe paused a little over the word, but Lori uttered it with a rapturous expression. Mary, no, we wouldn't. If you love me, Joe, I should be a perfect saint for you could make me anything you like. No, I can't. I've tried and failed, and I won't risk our happiness by such a serious experiment. We don't agree, and we never shall. So we'll be good friends all our lives, but we won't go and do anything rash. Another red flag I have here. Right? <laughs> right? No, this is, a, this is a chapter of red flags. The mm. whole, I'll change for you. I'll change for you. You can, you, why don't you change me? It's not, not good. Have you read Rose in Bloom? No, I have not. Yeah, it has this similar scene where uh, Charlie, who is the Laurie archetype, he sort of wants that Rose saves him from himself, from his Mm -hmm. misery, from his bad life. So it kind of reminds me that, like, Laurie wants Joe to save him. Yeah. But it's not Joe's job to save him or anyone no, else. He's that entitled young man, though, right? He wants somebody else to do the work for him, too. We will, if we get the chance, muttered Laurie rebelliously. No, no, do be reasonable and take a sensible view of the case, implored Joe, almost at her wit's end. I won't be reasonable. I don't want to take what you call a sensible view. It won't help me, and it only makes you harder. I don't believe you. You've got any heart. I wish I hadn't. There was a little quiver in Joe's voice. Thinking it a good omen, Larry turned around, bringing all his persuasive powers to bear as he said in the wheedlesome tone that had never been so dangerously wheedlesome before. Don't disappoint us, dear. Everyone expects it. Grandpa has set his heart upon it. Your people like it, and I can't get on without you. Say you will, and let's be happy. Do, do. Not until months afterwards did Joe understand how she had the strength of mind to hold fast to to the resolution she had made. When she decided that she did not love her boy and never could, it was very hard to do, but she did it, knowing that delay was both useless and cruel. I'm just shaking my head here. Right, (laughs) right. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of those things. It's just like what I the how I'd said that one of the members of the book club had, had said. This scene it shows what integrity Joe has because she's saying no, even though it's breaking her heart to break his heart. And you can feel that Joe feels so bad for him, but also he gives him all the reasons why they should not get married in this chapter. Right. Right. Like he says that, oh, cr- grandfather expects it. Your family expects it. Now he has started blackmailing her. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's all, it's all emotional manipulation and emotional blackmail. It's going to be your fault. Everyone's going to be disappointed. You're not just hurting me. You're hurting everyone. How terrible is that? Like in that 93 film where he says that you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I don't know about you, but I dated, I dated a guy who was kind of like this at one point. I only dated him because I had felt bad for him, which is a terrible reason to date someone. And I tried to break up with him and he threatened to throw himself in the gutter. So I didn't break up with him. And 
then I didn't know what to do. I was just kind of stuck with him. And then he asked me to marry him. And I was young and I thought, well, you know, when someone asks you to marry them, it's supposed to be a happy thing. So I did not have the strength that Joe had. And I said, yes, but the very next day I regretted it. But then I felt stuck. And because I was with somebody like this, who was like, it was like, he was my child. I kind of wish that people, that young women really read this like deeply analyze the way, the way the situation is, because this isn't romantic. Thank you so much for listening. A link to the full episode, I Hurt Myself If You Say No, Red Flags in Lover's Proposal, is in the description. Take care and make good choices. Bye.